Hey, what are you doing in my truck? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a long time. I'm sorry. Uh, I've been having a lot of things going on in the last six or eight months, and I'm finally getting a chance to breathe. And uh, I'd like to talk to you about some stuff going on. Uh, now, this isn't going to be a super political rant, okay? This is going to cover something that's been talked about by both sides. And my idea or a solution to make everybody happy all at the same time, okay? And that is going to be... We're going to start out with uh, Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe and the Sandwich Maker. They want 100% EVs, okay? They just want electric vehicles. No more gas-burning cars. All right? Then you have Captain Comover. All right? He's endorsed by the biggest manufacturer of EVs. However, he has even stated EVs aren't for everybody. And I can get behind that, all right? But how do we make everybody happy? You know, the, the demon rats, they don't want anything to do with, with oil and all that because, well... It's bad for the environment. You have greenhouse gases. Blah, blah, blah. So we're going to not give you an option. You are going to get an electric car. I got a new slash for you there, Demon Rats. If you halt production of petroleum, get used to walking around naked. Okay? Okay? Everything in your life, from the clothes you wear, okay, especially if it's made out of a polyester or something like that, is made from petroleum. Those sunglasses you're wearing, the sunglasses I'm wearing, made out of plastic, petroleum-based. That cell phone you like to stare at all day long, lots of the plastic and petroleum products in there. Let's not forget the lithium battery that's in there. Some kid in a third world toilet had to dig that out of the ground for you. Alright? Now, let's look at the other side. Yeah, we want our internal combustion engines. We want to drill, baby, drill. Isn't that what Captain Comover said? He wants drilling. Okay, I get it. Instead of going abroad and buying from them, let's uh, produce our own. That should bring the cost down a little bit, huh? I'm sure you're feeling the sting of the pump. I mean, as of today, was it the, uh, what is today's date? Um, I don't know, late July 2024, $4 a gallon. All right? It's stupid. What could we do to bring the prices down and make everybody happy? Well, for one, there's something that's been around for a while now. Ethanol. To the layman, you, you, you know it as E85. Okay? The only reason why they put 50% gasoline in there is to keep you from drinking it. Alright? Otherwise, it's just pure moonshine. What's the difference between gasoline and E85? E85 burns hotter. It burns cleaner. 40% cleaner than petroleum-based fuel, for the record. You can check those numbers. I don't provide false news. Anyways... Yeah, you don't get nearly as many miles per gallon as how quickly that stuff burns. But it's cheap, and it's available. 
let's look a little further down this rabbit hole, okay? We're not going to be on this all night. I'm just going to quick, you know, break it down. Right now, the, gov the government pays farmers. Um, the best way to say it is rent on land that they're not going to be planting on. Why do they do this? One, it prevents a surplus of vegetables and fruits. Okay? And two, it drives the price of everything else up. All right? What if we took away this little uh, hamstring? Say the farmer is all, you know, has 100 acres that he can use, but he's only allowed to use 75 of them. Why not let them use all of, all 70, you know, all 100 acres, right? Anything that's not used for human consumption, or turns or is just a surplus crop, could potentially be trucked to a uh, facility that they could make E85 at. So, right there, we have one new job for not, not for one person but one job type truck driver or even the, you, know, you know or the railroad okay you take your truck you drive to the railroad you offload at the train the train takes it to your uh, your facility that makes the uh, ethanol okay everybody is now making money farmer is getting paid because he's getting he's producing more you just opened up a whole new line of jobs for truck drivers so that makes them happy they're making they're now afforded an opportunity to make some more money and uh yeah so let's look at the other jobs that this creates temporarily we're gonna have to have some construction jobs okay we got to build these ethanol plants. I mean, we've got a few now, making the E85 that's already at the pump. But if we were going to scale things up, Europe is going to need a few more. So now you got to hire some people to build the damn thing. And then once they're built, you're going to have to hire people to man them. So now we just created a couple few thousand jobs if not more all right well you've got the finished product you've got ethanol all over the place what are you going to do with it you don't have to pack it into a train put it in a tanker take it to you know a storage facility or you know where it could be uh, distributed to uh, a bunch of tanker trucks which then take and distribute it to the, you know, the, the gas stations, all right? There's a win-win. You've got more truck drivers, more train engineers, okay? The railroads are making money. The Teamsters are making money. The farmers are making money. Not to mention, you know, like I said, the people working at the refineries are, are making money. Now let's go off on a tiny little tangent. We're going to talk about standardization. In 1996, all of the automakers came together and said, you know what, enough's enough. And standardized the OBD2 plug. That little diagnostics port right there underneath your, right underneath your steering wheel on every car made from 96 to present. Not only that, but most of the protocols in the computer are pretty damn close to the same. So that way, you know, you don't have to buy 50 different scanners. You can just have one. Right now, flex fuel, which is the option to run E85 or gasoline, is still an option in most vehicles. If 
it were up to me, every car rolling off the assembly line at any manufacturer, Honda, Ford, Chevrolet, Pontiac, if they brought it back so we could have a Trans Am again, are you listening, GM? Anyways, um, everybody gets together and says, all right, everything we produce with an internal combustion engine is going to be capable of burning E85. Yes, there are some minor differences between an E85 engine and a gasoline exclusive engine. I'm not going to get into that here. I don't have the time nor the patience to try and explain it, especially for those of you who don't know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, no offense. I'm just, no, I'm, I'm just trying to cover this up with some, you know, quick brush strokes here. So, automakers, you know, have to employ engineers who have to figure this all out. Then you've got parts production companies. Well, they got to make the pieces parts that make your E85 engines. And now that instead of it being an option, it's going to be a, you know, a standard item, means they got to ramp up production. Oh, so instead of working 12-hour shifts, we're going to work 24-hour shifts, which means we could have twice as many people working. We'll say 50 on the morning and 50 on the evening. We just created some more jobs. Oh, let's not forget the Teamsters. they got to bring the parts from the factory to the, you know, from one factory to another. You know, okay, we made the part here. we got to bring it over here to put it on the car. Oh, man, we just opened up some more jobs. Uh... And all these, all these cars have to get transported from uh, the, you know, the manufacturer to the dealership. Well, you've got, you know, trucks for that. And you got auto racks on trains for that. Yeah. Job security for the Teamsters and, and the railroads are in it. Still, I see a, a, a win here. Ethanol burns cleaner. You're not drilling holes into the ground so you're not you know using up an, uh, a resource that could potentially run out soon and you're not producing as much greenhouse gases uh, I see a win that should make both sides happy the guys who like the EVs can have their EVs the guys who don't like their EVs or want to travel farther without having to sit for 8 hours go ahead and keep buying vehicles. Normal vehicles, I should say. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with this logic. While we're on the subject of that, that's just gasoline. We haven't even scratched the surface on diesel. All right? These guys are talking about, you know, putting big-ass batteries on semi-trucks and having, you know, battery-powered semis. I know uh, International has been playing with it, and Freightliner has been playing with it. But these batteries are massive, all right? If you add all that weight to a truck, you have to subtract that weight from the payload, all right? So if you add 500 pounds to the truck, you are not allowed to carry that extra 500 pounds in a trailer because you're... You know, the, the DOT limits how heavy your truck with payload can be. So, I'm sure there's renewable options for diesel. Oh, that's right, they call it biodiesel. That's right, I forgot. Why aren't we funding that? Uh, anybody? Anybody? Anyone? Oh, big oil's in the way. Fuck big oil. Let's just do it. Um, they're also talking, hey, let's let's do electric motors and boats. Captain Comover just talked about this at one of his rallies. Okay? Maybe it was even at the RNC. I forget. But, you know, he was talking about how the weight of the battery would be too much for the boat. Hmm makes sense and that's it so what can we do there oh back to the e85 thing again there's your renewable resource it's cleaner and 
if it's produced here in America, using surplus vegetables that were already growing to begin with, the cost is going to be pretty damn low because, well, <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you get where I'm coming from. Why? Why haven't we been doing this from the start? And the same thing with uh, hybrid electric. And let's look at a true hybrid electric. Uh, Electromotive, for example. Uh, they're one of the leading manufacturers of locomotives. The diesel electric bo- locomotive does not have a mechanical coupler between the engine and the drive wheels. All the engine is there to do is to turn a generator to produce electricity, which turns the wheels. So, ideally, ideally, what we could be doing is having a little engine under the hood of our car that turns a generator, which in turn sends power to an electric motor at each of the four wheels if you want to go that route or have one electric motor to drive you know two wheels out the back or two motors for one for each you know end of the car i'm not going to get too crazy about it i'm just going to say now you got an engine work you know that's not working nearly as hard as it is to turn a transmission and propel a car all right why haven't we considered doing that with our semi trucks? Okay, and they have what's you know trains already use what's known as regenerative braking. Why aren't we doing that with our uh, you know they, they do it with with some EVs? All right, I know this. Uh, they do it with some of the uh, hybrids. They do regenerative braking. So why can't why aren't we doing this now with the big trucks where the engine just turns a generator since it's not working as hard it's not burning as much I I really think the OPEC has something to do with that but I can't prove it and I'm sure if I sat there and dug into it deep enough uh, you know a couple of black vans might show up in front of my house and I'll disappear so yeah (laughs) There's solutions for every problem. You just got to look at it and look at it right. Don't make snap decisions, all right? You know, Sleepy Joe and the sandwich maker, I I get where you're coming from, but at the same time, you put the cart before the horse. You can't make people like something or make people want something. That's a big no-no. And here's another thing. You might think you're doing good by the environment by having an EV when all you're really doing is moving your tailpipe to another county. Because now your power plant has to work that much harder to not only power your neighborhood, your work, and everywhere else, but now they got to add more power to charge your stupid little car. Which means now the power plants working overtime. And that's another thing. Power plants have already been working overtime for a long time. Okay? Our infrastructure is so far behind it's almost going backwards. And this has been happening for decades. Alright? Let's look over to the west. California. Yeah, I'm going to pick on you, California home of the woke you damn hippies you guys have demonstrated for years that your infrastructure is damn near shot alright how do I know this especially living in the midwest you see it in the news all the time brownouts rolling blackouts especially in the summertime when everybody and their mother wants to run their air conditioning, okay? If people's day-to-day lives 
okay? Just trying to stay comfortable is overtaxing an infrastructure. Adding more to it in, in the form of battery-operated lawnmowers, battery-operated lawn, uh, string trimmers, uh, electric vehicles. You're going to break the back of your state beyond how broken it already is. And that's going to happen in all 50 states. We are not yet ready for this mandate that uh, Sleepy Joe has put on. We need to find a middle ground. And we need to find one fast. Something that's not going to piss everybody off. And I genuinely think the renewable resource that is ethanol and biodiesel need to be looked at again. I think people are missing out on big opportunities for one, creating jobs, for two, taking the sting away from going to the pump. And for three, cutting our dependence on other countries. For Christ's sakes, this country should be able to sustain itself. But here we are calling on countries like Venezuela for gasoline and oil. All right? That's stupid. Why should we give them anything? We got people here starving, looking for work. Just quit with the jobs outside of the country. It's time to become self-sufficient, America. Let's do this.